Hi, welcome to Jackie Burns Creations. Today I am doing a collaboration on how to use gouache, or us ladies getting together painting with our gouache. If you are not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It helps my channel grow. Well, we have Daniela from Danielita. We have Connie from Connie's Creative Creations. We have Sarah from Can Sarah DIY It? And we have Lola. And we have me. Well, I took some gouache and I'm just using it to paint a background in. And I'll end up changing this, but that's the nice thing about gouache watercolor. It's water soluble and it's really easy to change. Um, gouache is a more opaque form of watercolor. Now there's acrylic gouache that uh, only reacts to water when it's being laid down. After that, it can't be changed. You get what you get. But regular gouache, you can go back and change it. You can lift the color, you can change it. And uh, I like it being changeable because, yeah, I change my mind a lot. So anyway, um, the paper I'm using isn't that great a paper. And I probably should have got out my 140-pound watercolor paper. But I just wanted to do, I haven't done, used gouache in probably over 20 years and... Well, this was a, like a new experience for me. So I'm painting this oval. And it's a kind it was in kind of a coral. And the, this one is in a charcoal gray, very watered down. If I used it straight out of the tube, it would be very thick, very, very thick. But it has more pigment than uh, watercolor. And watercolor, you always start out with light and you build dark on top. Gouache is like acrylic. You can start out dark and put light on top of it. And I mixed a little red, vermilion, and white to make a pink. And I'm just giving it a nice little quick wash. using my number 15 brush. And I'll do all my detailed uh, work with a number four brush. So you can see I've laid out some colors into my palette, use water to thin it down, a spray bottle at times, and it's good to have your colors laid out beforehand. I'm going to paint some lupins. Like I say, forgive me, I haven't done this in 20 years, so it gives me a good excuse to start practicing. You can see I've got my wash basin, and it's for cleaning my brushes and then I have a bowl of clean water to pick up to water down my paint. My oval's a little off there so I'm just putting in some stems. Just rinsing my brush and now I'm picking up some purple that I mixed with the white to make it a lighter purple. And I'm just making a little dot-like, yeah, little 
dots, basically. And they get a little bigger at the bottom, a little tinier at the top. And then I've got a darker purple next to it. That's a purple lake. And you just kind of make the dots to make a cone structure. Did I mention I'm making lupins? Love lupins. They're so pretty. Ooh, especially when you see the wild ones up in the Rocky Mountains. We have some of the most beautiful wildflowers up there. Now I'm just taking a little bit of green and uh, tapping it at the top to make it look like they're the flowers that haven't opened up yet. So I'm just coming down and making another cone-like structure. And I have sped this up a little bit. I put some dark in there toward the bottom and in and out of the picture a little bit. And like I say, then I put the green up at the top. And now I'm making some leaves. The leaves on the lupins are very distinctive. And I should have taped my paper down, but I didn't. You can use paper tape, paint tape, um, masking tape, washi tape. It's got to be a little careful with uh, masking tape that you don't rip your paper. And there it was done. Okay, now on my pink one, I'm going to paint some forget-me-nots. So I've made a light blue with my ultramarine and white. And I water it down. There, I'm adding a little bit of white to it. In watercolor, you don't add the white so much. You usually use your water to lighten the color. So I'm just making four or five little petals. I'm just scattering them throughout. I really do love to paint. I just get so busy with all the crafts that I don't get around to painting too often. I guess that should be a goal that I should paint at least once a week. Now I'm adding some little green stems with my emerald green. And I've added probably a little white to it, a little yellow to it to make it a little yellow green. Various colors. 
And you mix your gouache and your palette the same way you do watercolor. You could get a palette paper and mix it uh, on your palette paper also. It's just handy to have a palette. I just got these new palettes and I filled it up with the gouache. And of course I had to use the new palette. Now I am taking a little bit of the burnt sienna and tapping in some centers. You know, and even if you don't think you can paint, have you ever sat there and waited for somebody on the phone and you take a piece of paper and you take a pen or a pencil and you just doodle, whether you're writing your name big or little or drawing circles or whatever you're doing? Oh, yeah, here I decided I didn't like the shape of my oval. So I'm going back and you can see how I'm using the water to help me correct the shape. And I'm just going to make it into a rectangle. So anyway, back to doodling. Usually everybody doodles. Even when they say, I can't paint, I can't do this, I can't do that. Well, quit thinking you can't do something. Just even if you draw circles, well, instead of just getting out a pencil or a pen, get out some markers, get out some color pencils, get out some paint, and go ahead and just doodle. Nobody has to see it but you. It's not like you're going to have a show. The only one that you're going to gonna see it is you, unless you think it's so good that you want to show it to people. See how I'm straightening that out using the water? It's not looking much better than that weird oval I painted. Okay, now back. All right. Back, back to my uh, forget-me-nots. So I took a little lemon yellow and I'm dotting on top of the burnt, burnt sienna. And uh, I decided I didn't like that oval either. So to see how I'm changing it. And what I'm doing is I'm lifting some of the paint, but then swiping it around to other parts. And you can see how I've always, that's one of your best friends when you're using watercolor or the gouache, is to have a paper towel there. Now, I got out the 140 pound, and I'm showing you the difference between the two. Even in this video you can see the difference can you see how thick the one on the left is the 140 pound cold press watercolor paper the one on the right is called a multi-purpose i wouldn't suggest it for painting it wrinkles too much i think maybe i can take a warm iron and press it down a little bit so anyway i'm making some wild roses Back to the subject on hand. Just doing some nice little dots and dashes and bringing it around in a circle. Look like kind of a, a wild rose. And that white stands out against the gray so nicely. So anyway, get yourself a nice little 
packet of 140 pound watercolor paper. You can pay for them in all different prices. The very best is Arches, and it's expensive. But um, you could probably go into Michael's or Hobby Lobby or maybe even Walmart, I don't know, and pick you up a little packet of the 140 pound. Now, the hot press is the one that's rough. The cold press is smooth. Hot press is a rough paper. It's a little trickier to paint on. So I would suggest starting out with the cold press. Oh, I'm adding some stems and leaves and buds and Just kind of doodling, just playing around. Like I say, go ahead, pull out some paper. Even if it is the yeah, not so great paper. And and doodle. You might be surprised what your doodle will get you. Draw a bunch of little bees on your paper. Like I say, put some color to it. Color pencils, markers, gouache, watercolor, acrylics. I've painted with other paints. I haven't done the oils in a while. But uh, I have used watercolor, and I have used acrylic. But like I say, the gouache is almost entirely new to me. It's been so long. Gouache is really good, like, when people are doing advertisements. So it gives you a really strong, bold color. And it's so opaque, and uh, it's very correctable. And you can see some of the gray kind of comes through. The transparency comes through, gives my flowers their own shadows. And by the way, you saw at the first that uh, we are giving away a set of Hemi gouache. It's a gel gouache. I've never tried that. I don't even know how long that's been out. Um, but Sarah really likes it. And I think Connie uses it too. So what you need to do is you need to comment on everybody's video. Go crazy with those leaves. And then I go back in a lot of the leaves and I add a little bit of light for sunlight coming in. Dark for where the shadow is. Oh, and one, one nice thing about gouache too is you get a very matte finish. You don't get a shiny finish like you do in acrylics. I'll see if I have some little frames around here that I can frame these up. I do hope you have enjoyed this. It's been a fun collab with everybody. And I'll be doing it again, and next time I'll be practicing more. So I do appreciate each and every one of you. I welcome any newbies. And hello to my old subscribers. You guys are the best. I'm getting up there in the numbers. Monetized now. And like I say, you help my channel grow.
and I hope you come back and visit again really soon. Bye.